I really enjoyed the song that we sung at the closing of the Divine Hour last week. The song, the song goes like this, that judgment is set. We're told in the, in the book of Revelation chapter 14, in the first angel's message, it goes, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, the earth, and the sea, and the fountains of water. This is the first angel's message. And through this angel, there are certain parts of this message that we must have as our lifestyle. Fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his what? Judgment. Judgment is come. The question for you and me this morning is, do we really believe that we're living under the judgment hour? If we, are really, if we really believe that we're living under judgment hour, what should be our behavior? Amen. The servant of the Lord tells us in Great Controversy 409, I really uh, encourage us to have our pens and our papers, write down our notes, even our dates we're going to go through because it's very important. The scriptures, which above all others have been both the foundation and the central pillar of the Advent faith, was the declaration unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be one. What is the scripture? That is both the foundation and pillar of the Advent movement. Now what is the text? Daniel 8 verse 14. So this is the foundation of the Advent, what? Advent movement. The Seventh-day Adventist. It's foundation and pillar. Without an understanding of this verse, Daniel 8 14, we are sitting on sifting sand we will have no foundation and therefore the whole house will collapse so as God's people even though that you know it right we must be established in the truth the scriptures which above all others have been both the foundation and the central pillar of the Advent faith was the declaration unto 2000 and 300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. These have been familiar words to all believers in the Lord's soon work. By the lips of thousands was this prophecy repeated as the watchword of their faith. All felt that upon the events therein foretold depends, depended their brightest expectation and most cherished hope. These prophetic days have been shown to terminate in the autumn at 1844. So we must be able to prove if, we, if this is the foundation of our faith. Amen? And I know you know. But the Bible says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, Therefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. And so it is with Peter. I would like to say this Sabbath morning. Therefore I will not be one. Negligent to put you always in remembrance of, the, uh, in remembrance of these things. Though we know them. <coughs> and be established in the present truth. Daniel 8.14. The 2300 year one. We must know it by heart how to prove it, how to present it, and also we must live as if we're sitting before the judge, as we're living under the day of judgment. What does Daniel 8, 14 tells us? <coughs> and he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And then, Gabriel came and explained most of the prophetic vision in Daniel chapter 8. 
But in Daniel chapter 8, 14, Daniel did not understand the interpretation and the application of the cleansing of the sanctuary until 2,300 days. Why is this important? We have already known this is what makes us Seventh-day Adventists. Amen. Amen? This what makes us stand out from any other denomination in the world. It is the understanding of this prophetic vision given to Daniel. Even Daniel, in Daniel 8, 26, 27, they say, and the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told, is true. Therefore shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. And I, Daniel, fainted, and was six certain days, and afterward I arose and did the king's business. And I was at, uh, astonished at the vision, but none understood. What part of the vision in Daniel chapter 8 that Daniel did not understand? What part of the vision? <laughs> it was the 2,300 two days and the cleansing of the sanctuary, the he goat, and, and all other vision, the little horn. Daniel was given the interpretation. <clears throat> so at the end of Daniel chapter 8, Daniel was fainted and what? And then afterwards he arose up and did the, fist, the king's business. And I, I was as, as astonished at the vision, but I did not understand it. Then the Bible, the book of Daniel continues on in Daniel 9 verse 1 and 2. It says, and the first year, Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king of the realm of the Chaldeans. In other words, Daniel chapter 9 tells us who is ruling over Chaldeans. What's another word for the, the, the Chaldeans? Babylonians. The Babylonians. Who is ruling over the Babylonians? It's no longer Nebuchadnezzar. It's no longer his grandson. It's now who? Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, the seed of the Medes, which was made king of the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by what? Books. books. In other words, Daniel studied books, especially the book of Jeremiah. The number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to whom? Jeremiah. That the, he would accomplish the 70 years in desolation of Je uh, Jerusalem. <clears throat> what did Jeremiah say? Jeremiah chapter 25, we're laying foundation for our message. Jeremiah 25, verse 11 to 12. And this whole land shall be a what? Desolation. Desolation. Talking about the land of uh, Israel, Jerusalem. And an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of who? Babylon. For how long? 70 years. years. So Daniel studied by books, especially prophet Jeremiah, that they will be in captivity in Babylon for 70 years. And it shall come to pass when the 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of who? And that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity and the land of the Chaldeans, and I will make it a perpetual desolation. So the Bible tells us, after 70 years, something is going to take place. Amen. God not only going to punish the Babylonians, but he's going to send his people back to their own land. Then the instruction comes. What happened when they go to Babylon? The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away well. If you are to go into Babylon, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon, build ye what? And dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruits of them. So God gave them instructions. If you are going to go to Babylon, it's going to be a long time in Babylon. It's going to be 70 years. So when you go to Babylon, build yourself a house. But not only build yourself a house, plant he a what? And eat the fruit of the garden. In other words, God knew that the, the diet of the Babylonian, it's going to be different. So we're not only get, getting the health message from Daniel himself, 
the instructions were given. If you are to go to Babylon, plant yourself a garden, and eat the food of that garden, do not eat Babylonian food. Praise the Lord. We see here the love of God, even though that because of this obedience, these people were going to be taken to Babylon, but he gave the instruction, you're going to be there for 70 years, build yourself a house, plant yourself a garden, and you eat from that garden. Amen. Amen? So we see here in the instruction, even God himself had a plan for his people if they are to be taken captive. Then Jeremiah 29, verse 4 to 7. Take ye what? And beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons. And give your daughters. What does that mean? When you go there, take wives for your what? Don't marry the Babylonians. Are we together? That is the love of God. Even through his messenger, even Jeremiah, he gave them their diet. And they gave them how to survive and multiply in the land of the Babylonians. Take ye wives, beget sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to us, Amen. that they may bear the sons and daughters, that they may be increased there, and not what? Seek peace of the city. You're going to go there, marry your own people, and don't make trouble in Babylon. Amen? Amen. Don't cause trouble in the land of the Babylonians. And I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye have what? Peace. Then we come back to Daniel. Are we still together? Yes. Is, the, is God showing his love to his people? Yes. Amen. He gave instructions how to survive even in captivity. We still see the hand and the love of God for his people. Even with us in these last days. God is going to call his people out of Babylonian captivity for, through Daniel and through his prophets. Even us in these last days, God is going to call us out of our Babylonian captivity. Call us to go back into Jerusalem or into the country where he has prepared for us. Daniel 9 verse 1 to 4. In the first year, Darius, the son of Asuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king of the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of the reign of I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years. Wherefore, the word of the Lord came to whom? Jeremiah. Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I pray unto the Lord my God and made my confession. In other words, if there's something we don't understand, there's something from our lesson this morning. I didn't touch much about it, but I need to look more into it. I might need to uh, apologize to the church with what I said before. About, do you see the lesson this morning talking about those that were taken to heaven, there will be no wives, no marrying and giving in marriage, no children. Amen. You can go and study, but we cannot study without praying and what? Fasting. Anything we don't understand, we don't assume it, but with fasting and praying, we need to study the word of God. Are we together? So it is with Daniel, something Daniel didn't understand. Daniel didn't go around and, spit, uh, and, uh, and, and share errors around. He went and prayed and fasted. <coughs> and I pray unto the Lord God, made my confession and said, O Lord, great and grateful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that what? Love them. And to them that keep his commandments. We have what? And I have uh, committed iniquity and have done wickedly. The prayer is what? For everyone. When we pray, get used to the word we. We have done this. We need this. As a people. We have sinned and have committed iniquity, have done wickedly and have repelled. 
even by departing from thy law and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servant the prophets, which spake in the name of our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Now therefore, our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication, and cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is What's, what's the condition of the, the sanctuary in Jerusalem? Desolate. desolate. For the Lord's sake. How long has it been desolate for? Nearly 70 years. Nearly 70 years. Yea, while well, I was speaking in prayers, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation, and he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skills and what? Understanding. Understand. And the beginning of thy supplication, at the beginning of thy supplication, of thy prayer, the commandment came forth, and I come to show thee what thou art greatly what? Therefore understand the matter. Consider the vision. Amen? Isn't it wonderful to be called a great beloved? How many people in the Bible that they are called the beloved? Daniel the prophet? John the revelator? Isn't Daniel and John one of the greatest prophecy, prophets even for you and me? in time Amen. prophets. Amen. And therefore we need to study into it with prayer and fasting and supplication. What did Daniel <coughs> did not understand and what did Gabriel came to explain. And he said unto me, unto what? 300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. <clears throat> Amen? I'd like to encourage us. If we are Seventh-day Adventists, whether you are a pastor, an elder, a deacon, a member of the Seventh-day Adventist church, this is our foundation Amen. and the pillars of our faith. Amen. We must be able to give an explanation of what it means. Even Daniel himself fasted many days because he needed the explanation of it. And Gabriel came to give the explanation because Daniel was the beloved of God. Let me ask you something. Can you give an explanation of the 2300 days? Amen. Right now? I challenge you. If someone outside needs a, a Bible study right now, would you be able to give that? Amen. Are you ready to give a Bible study now of the 2300 day prophecy? Amen. <coughs> Therefore, we need the message. Amen? We need it. Because we need to share it. Daniel 9, 24, 27. The beginning of the 2300 day prophecy, 70 weeks are determined upon thy work and upon thy holy city to finish the work. In other words, the Bible tells us 70 weeks is given specifically for, for Daniel's people. What's the purpose? To finish the transgression and to make an end of what? And to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the, whole, the most holy. In other words, my friends, 70 weeks was given to them. What for? Finish transgression. Make an end for sin. How much longer have God given to us? How much longer? Much, much longer. The Lord should have uh, come even in 1888. It's the time of the loud cry, 1888. But God has given us much, much longer, many, many more years. Why? Finish transgression. Make an end of sin. That's our duty, my dear brothers and sisters. 
Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild who? Unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. How many weeks? How many weeks to end transgression? That was cut up to give into Daniel's people. Seventy weeks, isn't it? So it says, from the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. Three score and two. How many weeks all up? What is three score? A score is 20. One score is what? 20. Two score is what? 40. Three score? 60. So 60 weeks and two weeks. So 62 weeks plus seven weeks. How many weeks are those? Huh? 69 weeks. How many more weeks before the 70 week is finished? One more. And the street shall be filled again, and the wall even unto troublous time. How long to give it to restore Jerusalem? How long was given to restore Jerusalem? Seven weeks. How long? Seven weeks. Seven weeks. Amen. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come. And shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end there, thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolation and to terminate. In other words, the Bible tells us Jerusalem will be rebuilt in the, even the sanctuary, but later on, at the end of the 70 weeks, it will be destroyed once again. Okay? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall be caused to sacrifice. And the oblation to her sees no more dead animals for the overspreading of abomination. He shall make it desolate even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Unto 2,300 uh, 2, days, then the sanctuary be what? Cleansed. Now, we lay the foundation for the message. Let's talk this Sabbath about the restoration of um, the restoration and the building of Jerusalem. We're going to focus on that, that part of the 70-week prophecy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the world, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince shall be 70 weeks, seven weeks, and three score and two weeks, the street shall be filled again, and the wall even unto Tropolis. How many faces, how, how many attacks did it take for Jerusalem to be fully desolate? Three. Three, three attacks. Three attacks from who? Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. The first attack happened in the year. I want you to write these down. Right? The first attack happened in 605, and in that attack, Daniel and his friends were taken um, to, to Babylon. It's found in 2 Chronicles 36, verse 5 to 8. How many attacks? Three. three. Because these three attacks, it took three decrees as well to rebuild Jerusalem. 2 Chronicles 36. Write down your notes. Because afterwards I'm going to tell you to give me a Bible study on, on what we just went through. Amen. The first king that was ruling over Jerusalem before Nebuchadnezzar took it in the first place. Jehoiakim was 20 and 5 years old when he began to uh, reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And he did that which, which was good in the sight of the Lord his God. Evil. He did what? Evil. He did which was evil in the sight. Then the Lord says, if you obey my commandments, I will not bring another nation to rule over you. But if you disobey, I will bring another nation to rule over you. Even now, listen this morning. Joy came and he reigned 11 years and he did what evil in the sight of the Lord. Against him came up who? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters 
to carry him to Babylon. Babylon. Together with Jehoiakim, Nebuchadnezzar also carried over the one of the house of the Lord to Babylon and put them in his temple at Babylon, the same vessels that Belshazzar used for his party and therefore the, the writing on the wall. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and his abomination which he did and that which was found in him, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiachin, his son, reigned in his what? Remember, Jehoiakim, 605, taken to Babylon. In his place, his son Jehoiachin took over the kingdom. Did he repent? <laughs> Did he learn from the mistake of his father? No. no. In the third year, in Daniel chapter 1, of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto where? Jerusalem, and beseeched it. And the Lord came, gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessel of the house of the Lord, which he carried into the land of China, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessel into the treasure house of God. Mm -hmm. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king of the seed of the princes. Who do you think those were? Who were the princes of Israel? Daniel. Daniel and his friends. When did they when were they taken to Babylon? 605. The first phase of the besieging of Jerusalem takes place in 605. Jehoiakim, the vessels and uh, and the princes including Daniel were taken to where? To Babylon. <coughs> that was 605. Nebuchadnezzar made three trips to where? Jerusalem. Inflicting some of the destruction each time his first visit was 605 BC, King Jehoiakim was reigning. In his first siege, he took some captives, the princes, and took the sacred vessel of the Lord's house. Second siege took place in what year? 597 BC. 597 BC. Who's now <coughs> ruling in Jerusalem? Who's now ruling? Are you awake? Who's the son of Jehoiakim? Jehoiachin is now ruling in Jerusalem. So when Nebuchadnezzar got there, Jehoiachin is ruling in Jerusalem. Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did which was good in the sight of the Lord. Follow after the footstep of his wife. How old was he? Eight years old. How old are you, Lewa? Eight. eight? He was like Lewa's age when he did what which was good in the sight of the Lord. Is that true? A child doing which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Can a child do that which is evil? It's good to think about it, isn't it? Because we always say, oh, this is just a child. It's just a kid doesn't know anything. <laughs> Jehoiachin was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and when the year was, when he, when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him where? With the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord, and made Zedekiah. So who's the third king now? Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin, Zedekiah, the, the brother, now takes place. His brother king over Judah and what? Jerusalem. So five, six, 597. On his second siege, he returned in 597. Jehoiachin was the reigning king. In the second siege, he confis confiscated the rest of the sacred vessel of the Lord's house. He took 10,000 captives and also tears down the wall, even taking Ezekiel at the second siege. Ezekiel wasn't a prophet at that time. Right? So when Ezekiel now went, not a prophet, God chose him to be a prophet while he was in the land of Chaldeans. And that's why he saw the vision 
of the temple of Inua and all the abomination that are done in the midst of uh, Jerusalem. Who's the first king now? Huh? King. Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin. Who's the third now? Zedekiah. Who was he? The uncle. He was the brother of who? Jehoiakim. I hope you're awake. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar returned in 586 BC. King Zedekiah was the reigning monarch. This time, he showed no love. He leveled the city to the ground, completely destroying Jerusalem at the temple. He took almost all the, re the remaining residents into captivity, leaving behind only the poorest of the land. Of the land. In other words, the third time Nebuchadnezzar came, no mercy. Took everything, only the, the remaining ones were the poor. Now, those are the three faces of the fall of Babylon, uh, of Jerusalem. So it is with the rebuilding of Jerusalem. It took three decrees before the building started. Are we together? Amen. How many faces? Three. Three. Ezra 6, 14. And the hours of the true building. And... Prospered through the prophesying of Haggai, the prophet, and Seneca, uh, Ze Zechariah, the son of uh, Ido, Edo. And they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the uh, of who? God of Israel. According to the commandment of who? Cyrus. Cyrus, first decree, Darius, second decree, and out of Xerxes, the king of Persia, the third decree. When, it, when did Jerusalem was fully rebuilt? After three decrees. Right? Started with Cyrus, Darius, and then other successes. The first decree was given to Cyrus. The prophet at that time was Serbabel in the year 531. 537 BC. Should we sta start the 2300 day in 537? Why? Because it wasn't fully well, restored and rebuilt. The first decree given in 537, text Ezra 1, verse 1 to 4. Second decree was given to Darius. The prophet was Ezra in the year 519 BC, text Ezra 6, verse 1 to 1. 12. What, what's the text? What's the text before that? Prophet and King 612. As Ezra looked over the company assembled, he was surprised to find none of the sons of who? They were supposed to go to, to Jerusalem to rebuild Jerusalem. <coughs> God says, Prophet Jeremiah, go over there, build yourself houses, plant your cattle, because it's going to be a long time away, 70 years. Now, 70 years is now nearly up. 70 years is nearly up. The call came to return to where? To Jerusalem to rebuild. And guess who didn't come? And Ezra looked over the company assembled. He was surprised to find none of the sons of who? Ah, who are the Levites? The priest. His children didn't want any part of the rebuilding of Jerusalem. Wonder if it will repeat in our days. Interesting, isn't it? Amen. Where were the members of the tribe that had been set apart for the sacred service of the Lord? To the call. Who is on the Lord's side? The Levite should have been the first to respond. Come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. Where are the sons and daughters of the Levites? And besides, 
the Jews remaining in Babylon were in danger of having their religious liberty restored. In other words, God called them out at the time when God knew that their freedom of religion is going to be stripped away. Through the prophet Zechariah, as well as their recent uh, experience during the troublous time of Esther and Mordecai, the Jews in Middle Persia had been plainly warned to return to their own world. Yeah. Return to their own land. Why? It's, there's freedom. There's freedom. Why has God given us a called out of Babylon message today? Why has God called us to go to the countries, plant our own food? Because our freedom is going to be restricted. Freedom to worship God, freedom to buy and sell is going to be restricted. And there is a call to come out of what? Babylon. So it is with the beginning of the 2300 day prophecy. It's going to be like that at the end of the 2300 prophecy. Now the book from Stephen Hester. Uh, Daniel the prophet. Daniel realized that sin had darkened the vision of many of God's deep professed ones. Mm -hmm. What has darkened the mind and understanding of God's people? Sin. What is sin? Transgression, Transgression of God's law. What about in our days? What will it be that will cause God's people to go into more abomination? And the world, much worse than the world will do. Sin. Sin. Some who were in Babylon were careless and what? <laughs> Concerning the truth of God. Many had gotten them homes and rested secure in the assurance of that when the captivity began. They were told to buy land and build one. Oh. That's what that's that's the instruction that God gave. But not to remain there at the end of the 70 years. Amen. Some were content with present surrounding and dreaded the difficulties. Do you know how long the journey from Jerusalem to Babylon and from Babylon to Jerusalem? 1,444 1, kilometers. They have to walk. It's from here to Brisbane and an extra 200 kilometers. From here to Sydney is 600 kilometers. Are we together? To go to Sydney and come back is 1,200 kilometers on foot. You walk from here to Brisbane and that's why people did not want to walk back to Jerusalem. Amen. That is too far. But God is the one that invites them to go back. In other words, going back to Jerusalem is not an easy road. Calling us to go back to the country is not an easy decision. Amen. There will be difficulties and hardship in living that lifestyle. <clears throat> which must attempt the journey to Jerusalem, which was in the hands of the hostile tribes, and where there was no pleasant homes, Jerusalem should be filled. They argue that others should do it, not one. Yeah, yeah. That's not our problem. Remember, who was in Jerusalem when the first siege took place? Only the poor. How can they rebuild Jerusalem? So they said, let them do it. A love of Babylon was strong in the heart for me. For 70 years after the decree of Cyrus, when all were at liberty to return to Palestine, the young man who had been educated in the school of Babylon, like the daughters of Lot in Sodom, partaken of so largely of the custom that they lingered among the, the heathen. The heathen. That, brothers and sisters in Christ, is repeated in our very old day. Amen. Third decree. Done the king Artaxerxes. The prophet was Nehemiah. 
The year was 450 what? 5070 BC. 6 Ezra 7 verse 1 to 3. And this is where the started date, the starting date of 2300. They were buying and selling on the Sabbath. What was happening in Jerusalem? They were buying and buying on Sabbath. They're buying and selling on Sabbath. The people were not hearing the Lord. The preachers were entangled in business and agriculture. Things were out of hand in Jerusalem. What is so special about 457 BC? The work of restoration and reform carried on by the returned exiles under the leadership of Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah present a picture of a work of spiritual restoration that is to be wrought in the closing days of this earth's history. The prophet here describes a people who in a time of general departure from truth and righteousness are seeking to restore the principles that are, fa are the foundation of the kingdom of God. Our year is 457. What was the work? Not only physical work, but spiritual restoration. How were they able to do it? There was the straight testimony of the truth. But it wasn't just preaching. They moved and built Jerusalem. And there was a great restoration, reform, carried on by the return of the Lord. That must happen in, when would that happen? Have you wondered? Ask the question. The more you want it to happen, the more the world, the church, becomes the world. That's a question I would like to leave with us this Sabbath. Just like in the day, the person present a picture of the work of spiritual <coughs> restoration that is to be wrought in the closing days of this earth's history. The same revival must take place in the Seventh day Adventist movement. It must. Otherwise, we'll be here and others take the place. Are we together, my dear yes. brothers and sisters in Christ? Yes. The 2300 day prophecy is the foundation and the central pillar. You know, us islanders, we have those Samoan and Fijian huts. You have to have one strong pillar in the middle, otherwise the whole house will collapse. Mm -hmm. The 2300 day prophecy is as the central pillar of the building. Mm -hmm. Why? It reminds us that we're living under the time of judgment. We learned from our lesson this morning, every, every little idle words out of our mouth, whether we joke about it, whether we just say it out in, uh, in anchor, it is recorded and we will be judged by those words. Mm -hmm. So it is with Jesus. The words that those Pharisees utter. We must kill those that killed the son of the, the, the owner of the vineyard. But they didn't know that was them pronouncing their own. You are correct, Jesus. You say it right. Didn't know that they are testifying that whatever Jesus was saying is the truth. And so it is with us today. We're living under judgment. For the hour of his judgment is what? Come. Is come. In other words, the message, fear God, give glory, must be taking place in a time when the judgment is taking place. Where does the restoration start? It starts in our homes. Are you hearing me? Yeah. The restoration of Jerusalem starts with the heads of the family telling their children, let's go and build some bricks and carry it to build the fence of the city and build the sanctuary. Starts with the voices in the home. And the voices in the home are not positive. The children will not want to listen. 
if the voices of the, of the patriarchs and the matriarchs of the home are positive, all the children will want to follow after heroic um, leaders of the home. Amen. So why are our churches like this? It is because of our homes. The voice that our children are hearing at our homes. Amen. 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 Doesn't excuse me because the Levites went. But where are the children? That's our message this Sabbath. Amen. Very, very important that we know brothers and sisters in Christ because we must be able to prove that we are living under the day of judgment. 457, the third degree and the other sexes is the beginning of that 2300 day prophecy. Amen? Amen. Jesus is the only answer. We really want to see Jesus. He carried our sins on his shoulder. And he died because of our sins. And brothers and sisters in Christ, he is truly coming back. Let us upstand and close divine hour and hymn that on the